Hey, thank you for joining me. Rob Norton here. Um, I appreciate all of you who uh, watch my channel. Um, it's been getting bigger and bigger. I've been getting more and more subscribers, uh, two or three a day, sometimes up to five a day. I'm shocked and I appreciate it so much. Every one of you who watch these, um, thank you so much, guys. This is so fun. I've said this several times. Um, this is so much fun for me. And if you're watching these, I presume that there's something that I'm doing that is at least kind of interesting to you. Maybe you're even making fun of me and I deserve it. My silly voice, my stupid format. I just turn the camera on and talk about shit with a stupid little pointer and then shut the camera off. There's no music. There's no editing. I try to just have it down to just the bare bones, the most basic, simple shit. So you turn it on and get into it. Anyway, if you don't like what I do, I, at least thank you for checking out and giving it a shot. And if you've been watching them and going along with me, thank you so much. Um, this, um, I, I, I was kind of going to hold on to, hold off on doing this because I tend to do a lot of Rob Liefeld stuff and I tend to give him a lot of shit. Um, hey, I've got a viewer out there. Um, I'm awesome. You, you're you not, I believe is his handle, buddy. I, I know I just read your comment recently when I did uh, X-Force number one. And um, he was kind of mentioning that it's so easy to rip on Liefeld. And he's right. So many people do it. Why not do something else? Why not talk about the stuff that he does that's right? And I try to balance it out. I try to, I try to tell what I think works with what he does but when he does stuff that doesn't work and some, I just have to point it out. I try to make a point to not talk shit on the human being, not Rob Liefeld, the man, the husband, the, the father. Um, he seems like he's a dedicated, devoted husband. He loves his children. He shares on his social media, the things that he loves his wife. He's, he's pimping his pimping. I'm sorry. I don't mean that, but like he's hyping his children's accomplishments. One of his kids has become an actor he loves his kids. He loves his family. He loves comics and he's always hyping them up. So I try not to talk shit about Rob Liefeld, the human being. I only want to address the work that he puts out there that is up for criticism like anybody else. I'm an artist. I, I put together my own stupid books. I'm not drawing anything professionally. So what the fuck do I know except I have an opinion and I want to share it. And I think a little bit differently from other reviewers I, I'm a guy who draws, and so I have a perspective on the art itself because I do it as well. I don't know how many people, I've, I mean, I've seen some other channels where people review books, and I mean, some of the ones I've ran across are like, there's guys that literally read you every word of every text inside the book trying to do voices, and it's so obnoxious and dumb to me. Like, that's just... I have to shut that shit off. So I try to offer commentary on what I think works, what artistically works, because I do draw. And so that stuff stands out to me. It's important to me. And Liefeld, he'll do some really interesting, good stuff, but he does some of the most ridiculous, stupid shit. I can't believe it. And I have to point it out. And part of it is fun because it makes for a fun video. Like when I'm doing these, I just, I don't really think about what I'm going to say. I just turn the camera on and it's streaming consciousness and I go. And sometimes I'll go back and, oh, well, I definitely go back and rewatch what I've done. And I've said stuff I don't even remember saying in the moment because I'm just trying to get through it and keep going. And, you know, some of the stuff with Liefeld that's kind of funny, it, 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 it makes it for a fun video. I know it's kind of lowbrow shit to mock the guy, but it makes it for, it makes a fun video. It gives us some laughs. And the guy is, he's kind of a douchebag online. I know he just said I don't want to rip on the guy, but his social media presence, if you are sucking his balls, he's your best friend. But if you even offer up the most microscopic bit of, of critique, he calls you out, blocks you, calls you a piece of shit, and he hates you. I'm not joking about that. He straight does that. Now, he's been giving shit for a lot of years, and at a certain point, he's done with it. So I get it. I 100% get it. But man, he leaves himself open for critique. So I understand if this is kind of obnoxious and you're kind of done, anybody out there like, I've heard enough of Liefeld and his, his the bad. I'm not gonna stop what I'm doing. Um, I think it's fun. We're gonna t point out what's good and what's bad. Young Blood number one, it's a flip book. If you ever remember seeing this, I don't know how many times this has ever actually been done where there's two stories and it's just flipped over and um, there's two stories going on in a book, but it's on a flip, you know. This is how you get into them. 
the first comic printed by Image Comics. Um, high sales, great financial success for him, jumping from New Mutants and X-Force right into his own team. Not a bad cover, pretty iconic. I mean, again, there's this this classic, like, weird circular ground that they're all standing on, and a lot of the cliche things that Liefeld gets called out for a lot. No feet anywhere. Like, he specifically cut them off on this little round hill. I think he actually heard the criticisms, criticisms on the no feet thing and made a point to start drawing feet all the time just to get people to shut the fuck up. He still can't draw feet very well, but that's okay. Um, it's just something that he would do when it was really super obvious. Um, not a big deal. Anyway, let's get into the book. Starting off with a positive, despite his weird artistic things, I think this black and white drawing looks good. Here's the thing. I had this opinion recently. I, I think I saw somebody else comment on it, and I can't remember if it was someone who commented on it in one of my videos on his books or something else I was reading. Modern day, hyper beautiful, highly rendered coloring, which is not this, but modern coloring makes Liefeld's work look worse. I think his work looks best black and white or with flat old school coloring, the way New Mutants 100 looked and the way X-Force looked. A more flat color flatters his work better than modern day hyper rendered crazy computer coloring because that coloring is trying to define forms and shapes and three dimensional things that Liefeld can't do. So just a thought. I wonder if you, you, any of you out there have that kind of similar opinion on it. But this black and white drawing where it's also him doing his own ink line and he would ink with the uh, classic Hunt 102 pen. And that's where you get these organic lines. That's how this stuff, that's why it looks the way that it does. Let's see if I can get this a little closer so you can kind of see. This This type of a pen is what gets you these kind of looks. Now, he draws almost exclusively, it seems like, these days with tools like Micron and um, pit pens. He draws with these things with varying degrees of success, in my opinion. But I think his artwork looked best when he was inking himself on the New Mutants and X-Force and these first issues of Youngblood, this organic line, this looks good. I like this. Color design by Brian Murray. Brian Murray, no disrespect to the man. I think it is absolutely fucking horrible. It's just terrible. Um, the cards in it, Vogue, that's fine. Big city shot. I don't think Liefeld did this. I think he had one of his homies pull that off. He, he can't draw this. He, he, he just can't. But there, you know, and also this is something I didn't notice until recently someone else pointed out, but the lettering is pretty bad. It's like just, I, I don't know how to put it. It's not someone who's a um, an experienced letterer. It's just basic bubbles and little pointers and it's it's really terrible. It's hard for me to explain. I don't want to go on too long because I'm going to have plenty to say about this book. The lettering is actually pretty shit. And I don't usually point that out. But until I saw someone else mention it, I think it was on the cartoonist kayfabe guys. They mentioned like it's, the, the lettering is pretty bad. Um, they don't even list who does the lettering. It doesn't even say. But, you know, we're here for the characters and for the exciting artwork. So this is the main character. We don't really know that yet. But his name's Shaft. He's the guy with the uh, bow and arrow. That's him here. He's out on a date with some girl, I guess. They're at a shopping mall. Um, just talking, interacting, doing whatever. Typical Liefeld stuff. And some guy, some random guy is running away. They're yelling for security. So our guy jumps into action, grabs him as he's going down the escalator. And I look at this monstrous face. And this big, giant hair. Like, he suddenly went from, like, a happy... Well, he'd never been a happy-go-lucky-looking guy. Like, dark eyes there, angry face. And look at this giant afro he's got going on. That's, that's funny. Angry face. He's punching at the bad guy. And there's some other dude up here on somewhere in this mall, I guess, up on a railing. He's got a gun-type device. Got, a, got him locked on with the scope. He notices it, so... I guess he's got a pen somewhere from somewhere in his jacket. Look at his 
big blocky square body. Like if you try to like figure out where his body is inside here, like how his ass comes out to here. It's so, this is not a guy who's worked out the physical proportions. Like the way that you should do this is if you're drawing this, let me grab a piece of paper. <clears throat> if you're doing this, what you should do is you, you start with like the basic gesture. Like you'll draw like a head and then use it like a, like a, stick figure, skeletal thing, like you're gonna like, well, he's gonna be going like this and kind of bent over and then he's gonna be throwing with his arm. And so then you'll start drawing in like a, again, like a stick figure to figure out where all the body placement of all the shapes are gonna go. So he's, he's like looking this way, you'll do like cones and shapes like this to kind of give it some mass. You start kind of feeling where the muscles are and then you start realizing, well, I'm getting, my proportions are getting out of control. His body is getting too big for his head. So you either shrink up the body or you make the head bigger and wherever his other arm is. And then he's, he's throwing the pen. So you get the figure all worked out. And then once you get it worked out, then you can kind of apply his coat to the, to the figure and get it into some proportion. That's how you have to draw the underdrawing first and get the figure and then you put the coat on it. I firmly believe Liefeld goes in with a small drawing and just does like a quick little head and he just draws like a coat and the arm and the leg and he just does that and then he blows it up and inks it. In fact, he says he essentially does that more detailed than what I did there. But that's how you get weird fucking proportions that just look odd. But in a way, all you're noticing is this head. He really makes you focus on the angry, screamy head. And then you're moving quickly through the comic. You're, you're into the energy and the excitement and the drama. And so he throws it, smacks the guy in the throat, and he goes over the railing one way here and then that way there. Okay. The guy is knocked down. He's dead, I guess. Um, he's standing there. Posing again, big headshot, big poofy hair with these little wormy noodle things going on. The news crew shows up to talk to him. Um, he wants to, he just wants to get out of here. He doesn't want to be part of this. Uh, Shaft doesn't. He gets an alarm because this little beep, 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 beep thing's going off. So he's got, he's got to turn, he's got to run out, he's got to go do heroic shit, and his girl's happy. Cut to a new scene in Baltimore, Maryland, 2 32 p.m. Um, it's a house. This is Bad Rock. He was called Bedrock at first was his name. But then I think there was lawsuit shit from Hanna-Barbera for using the name Bedrock. So they changed him to Bad Rock. He's basically a kid given this monstrous body. And so he's there home with his mom having dinner. Kind of an interesting design, interesting character. In a way, he was the most interesting character in the entire book. But yeah, she calls him Bedrock. So he's got to head off to go do superheroic shit because he's needed. Um... 12.44 p.m., you got Die Hard. He's locked away in some kind of mechanical device. He wakes up. He flies off. He says, I must make better use of my freedom this time. So he's locked away, and he's going to help join the team and be do some cool superhero shit. This coloring in the background, not the best. Basic perspective on some backgrounds here. Again, I bet you Liefeld did not draw this at all. Like, there's no way. Anyway, um, you got Chapel here. He's in bed. Another light, another love. Chapel, my man. Um, he says another night, another love, but it's like 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Like, this is late afternoon. So they've been laying in bed, just chilling out. Duty calls. He's like, get up, babe. I got to go. I got to go put on my makeup and carry my big gun. That's pretty awesome. You know, not a bad gun, I guess. It's all right. He's got to go do superhero shit with the rest of them. The team is forming. In this one, the team is already formed versus Wildcats and Cyberforce where the, the team is coming together for the first time. This team is already together. So more buildings, a girl jumping across. This is Vogue. She's Russian. She's got a pale face. Purple's her thing. Again, I don't think Liefeld drew these buildings, like for real. She's jumping. She's excited, getting in with the team. So Shaft, he's talking to this other character, who's part of the team 
of the, because the flip book element to this, there is like the home team and the other side is the away team. Now Photon here, he's part of the away team, but he makes a cameo appearance here, so that's okay. Um, so they're talking, the team is gathered. I kind of appreciate, I gotta be honest, I appreciate the way that he's drawing all these characters here, head to toe, standing on this horizon, the, the, the line here but he doesn't have it a giant full page thing, which he could have done easily, but it's just kind of a simple reserved picture of all these guys. So that works, but they're gathered together. Um, there's some vehicle that's under attack. Some bad guys are doing something. They say it's, it's strong arm and gauge the four. So they're like, Oh yeah, we know these guys. We got to go stop them. So they're kind of setting them up as an established team with established villains rather than gathering the team together for the first time. That's all fine. You know, it, it, it works, but you really have to get in some good characterization to make you care about them rather than just kind of relying on the fact that you're familiar with the tropes of comics and that's what sells you on what's going on, which is what happens here. Um, another just amazing Liefeld helicopter. Just wow. But, you know, down Angle Street, a truck, some bad guys. There's another one of those round hills. There it is. Big, strong guy. Um, Gage, I think, is this guy. Strong arm is this guy. Another life belt thing with his big, angular, muscular body. These thick, thick legs that are just kind of coming out of his lower body. It's just kind of silly. It's like cut and paste cops down here. Um... This is kind of a cool panel with the blast lines coming out. A lot of energy. He rips the door off this van. I, I'm buying it. I believe it. And then you got Deadlock and Gage. Some just other superheroes just standing there. Not even locked down. Chained to anything. Well, that's fine. They bust them out. And all right, we're, we're back together. We're the four. We're a bunch of bad guys. Some arrows ch -ch -ch come down and hammer into the ground. Here comes Die Hard. Busting the hell out of the main uh, big strong guy. Smashing him up. Big, super badass, powerful punch. Uh, I was talking about in Savage Dragon number one where Liefeld does this a lot. Where a big punch and a guy recoiling in that, you know, the, the, the impact of that thing here. And Larson does that too. And he's just as good. Just as good as Liefeld. Probably better. But a lot of energy and excitement. I, I, I'm here for it. I like it. Knocked him out. And he's like, you know, the heroes are here. You bad guys are trying to get away. But um, guess what? The heroes are here. And not bad, you know. I could go on about some crappy drawing stuff, but just looking at it as a whole, big, awesome spread. This is where he held off and saved the big imagery till the end. Shaft is looking awesome. I got to tell you, I got really, really, really sick of his bow and arrow without a string. It's supposed to be some kind of like advanced technological energy projectile, like a magnetic kind of thing that projects the air. So it's not actually a string, but it just got old because he just doesn't want to do it, I believe. The Rocky Rubble is like, you remember that Rocky Rubble I was talking about? Uh, if you watch my video on Cyberforce, I'm going to pull it open here because I was I went on a big long thing about, look at the rubble that Silvestri will draw. Really good. And then... Life has just got some basic shapes. Now, does it matter? I don't think so, but it it looks good. Or I mean, it reads. You know what you're seeing, but I don't know. It could be done better. But he's focused his energies on the badass picture of Shaft. Vogue looking good. She's got her boobies hanging down pretty big. Chapel's looking good. Like he's riding a motorcycle doing a wheelie and not even holding on to the handles. But we're here for it. It's cool. Bedrock, bad rock, looking good. I never cared for these super giant, thick, crosshatchy things. That shit never looked really good. It's kind of unnecessary. But as a whole, just flipping it open, you're here for it. And that's the end of part one, A team, the home team. That's how that ends. So not bad, not great. It's not going to change the world and change history. It's okay. It's not the worst thing he's ever done. There's some things in there that are good. I think the home team story was done way better than the away team. There's some interesting stuff in here. Flipping it open, 
You've got, again, another black and white drawing of, the, drawing of these characters. I think the line work looks really good there. I, I like that a lot. This shit is the worst opening page ever. Like, a news anchor, like, a lion out of his head, like, he's in a corner. This is supposed to be a TV monitor. Crappy, horrible helicopters. Everything here, like, he did not care about this page at all. If you see what Liefeld does and what he excels at, this is everything he does not excel at. And you can tell his heart's not in it, but this is the opening page. You have to sell it. Like, you can't draw a guy talking into a microphone that looks like, like a lollipop and then his poor mutant weird misshapen hand but it's the away team they're jumping into battle there's something exciting so he may be bored on this page he was not bored on this one so here you go i kind of like these little small drawings of the team jumping out and then big splash pages of these characters cougar sorry um, Sentinel, right? Uh, Brahma is the big strong guy here. Riptide, combat, and um, there's a guy, where is he? Sci-fire, oh yeah. Um, I've flipped through this recently. You know, the coloring is kind of dicey. It's not really super great, but it works. Everything kind of works as just a big action scene comic. It's fine, but we're going to pay attention to, this is combat here. His shoulder pads, his helmet, his gun, the things on his arms, and the size difference, how things come and go. They disappear, they reappear, they change literally from panel to panel, not just page to page, but panel to panel. I will call out as a positive, he's got villains with like faces rather than just a bubble mask to make him look like a nobody nothing. I think this looks all, these bad guys look pretty good. And as a double page spread, the team jumping into action, but combat here, see his giant, giant, giant gun? And I like it. It looks good. Look on the very next panel. Next page. It's a little tiny thing. Now some people would say, why do you care? Well, also look at his shoulder pads. It's a big flat thing here, which whatever it is, whatever it's supposed to B, it's just big flat shoulder pad. And it's the same thing, it's symmetrical. But you get onto the next page and suddenly it's just this ribbed one. He's got there and there. And his gun went from giant thing to little tiny guy. And a little tiny guy right there. I mean, okay, oh, if you say so, buddy. Cougar's cool, dropping down, smashing into these bad guys. They're fighting. The energy's good. The action is good. Man, combat is just a massive guy. I mean, he he's big. Um, I don't mind all that. Just the weird costume changes. There's that little bubble ground there, that little circle ground there, circle ground there. Then he's standing over. Now, look, his sleeves have changed into this metallic sheathing, which you see in comics all the time. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. He also doesn't have his shoulder pads on. They're just gone. Crosshatchy nonsense in the top. This big shot of Cougar jumping up. The coloring is pretty cool. Um, combat's looking like he is. Here's the bad guys, like with their, they start turning into little bubble head shapes. Like, did you even realize that these are supposed to be human heads? wearing helmets. I doubt you did. The coloring on the background, that's that's wild. That's crazy. Um, Cougar's cool, you know. At least he's, he's the tough animalistic character of the group, kind of like Warblade, Ripclaw, but he doesn't have claws. So I don't know what he's fighting with besides his bare hands. That's okay. And then look, our boy Combat, whose shoulder pads change, the size of his gun changes, his, ar his sheathing on his arms changes. He's there. Suddenly, he's got his giant gun again, and his shoulder pads are now both the ribbed things. And he's got like the metal sheathing on his arm. He's also got this big gauntlet on his forearm there. It's not there. It's not there or there or there or there. But suddenly it is there. And he's got a giant gun again. <laughs> Look. I know Liefeld's got a lot of things, a lot of fans and people love him. When you talk about his energy and his excitement, I get it, I get it, I get it. 
but I draw comics. I'm drawing characters panel to panel. This is ridiculous. So if it's something you can kind of let slide by, I, okay, more power to you. It's so stupid to me. It's so inconsistent. It's dumb. Whatever. Um, I kind of like the, it looks like um, some screen tones with these straight parallel lines to give it some sh shading there. I think that looks cool. That's all fine. Um, <laughs> I hope you have any idea of the ground where they're at, the, the landscape, because it's kind of just nowhere. A couple little lines to show ground and somehow Riptide's able to pull water out of wherever to, you know, wash over the bad guys there. Brahma, the big dude, he's screaming and yelling and punching at him. They're going towards some little tiny little shack, I guess, is where the bad guys are. Again, water doesn't look, the coloring doesn't look great. But as a kid, you read it, you understood. You're just excited for like the exciting imagery. It's moving on. It, we're, let's go find a bad guy. Some weird compound. I mean, the coloring, look how kind of crazy this is. It's not the best coloring at all. Um, they're blasting, continue to take out the bad guys. There's some tanks. Suddenly, they're not anywhere here, but there's tanks there. And it's funny because she's, they're showing how she's using her powers to have the water burst up from under the tanks and lift them up off the ground. But this little shack of a building, in comparison to the size of the humans, it's like the tanks aren't being lifted up very far or they're, else this building is really super tall. And then he swoops down and blows up something it doesn't even show what he's blowing up i guess the tanks it doesn't show it because there's no backgrounds anyway they continue on more of that weird ridiculous cross hatchy shit in the background i like this panel the heavy shadows the energy the crackle them getting zapped and stunned and knocked out looks good i'm here for it i like it you got um, the major villain he's supposed to be like a saddam hussein kind of analog that's fine but there's one character who you've never really seen yet or really had any interaction with. His name's Sci-Fire, this weird energy guy standing there. I What are these? What are these? Hold on. What the fuck are these? Are they like curtains hanging behind them? They're not anywhere else. Why are they there? You, you like Liefeld, you tell me what these are. It doesn't make no sense at all. Anyway, Sci-Fire, you're getting the sense that he's kind of a little bit of a looney tune as he's facing off against the main villain. Cut back to outside, you got combat here. He gets his helmet knocked off. I kind of like the helmet. I don't know that they ever bring it back, but this big robot thing knocks it off him. So Cougar here is just pounding on this robot guy, and combat's like, dude, get off him. He's angry. He's kind of pissed. This is another image I remember as a kid going, ah, it's badass, it's awesome. But it's kind of because he focuses on the face and kind of like the energetic pose. But look at this nondescript body, zero background, a poof of smoke going off into the distance. Somehow, some way, there's no design there. He's got that big gauntlet thing that he had on his wrist on that one panel that wasn't there. Then it was, now it's gone. A lot of energy, he punches a guy, smacks a guy. Again, another, like, what is this smoke coming out of his feet? I don't know. Circular ground thing, circular ground thing, circular ground thing. I mean, he really leaned into it once he found it. And once people started giving him shit for it, he stopped doing it. But so now he stands there. Now the sheathing on his arm is gone. The one side of his... um shoulder pad things are gone now you could say that he lost his shoulder pad things because they got punched off him it's there but he doesn't have either one of them there very the next pass one second later his shoulder pad things are gone and then it's back and then it's gone and then it's on the other side it's on the right here over here it's on the left when it's not there at all and they're both there and then he doesn't the metal sheathing now it's just gone from there Whatever. They're talking about how, yeah, yeah, fight, fight. He, he puts back on his helmet, which I kind of like. That big helmet of his thing, it works. No shoulder pad things at all. Whatever, right? What do I know? Big shot of sci-fi energy guy having a face-off with the villain. Um, they're talking some stuff. Sci-fi is going to do some mind power stuff. Takes out his robots. 
energetic eye stuff, the bad guy, the Saddam Hussein, screaming, energy, color, close up off on it, close up on his eye, big screamy face, and boom, our hero blows up the bad guy, I guess. All you can tell there's a bunch of blood going on. Pretty wild stuff. Sitting there covered in blood, standing over his dead body, and the other team shows up. The rest of the team shows up. I'm like, holy shit, what did you do, dude? And he's, whatever, he's dead, he's down. They took him out. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to do that, big guy. And they're all kind of like just having different reactions, most of it negative to what he did. Um, Combat thinks it's impressive. He's thinking, hey, good job, you're a warrior. You you blew him up. And uh, like, oh, this is going to be difficult to explain to our superiors. And then just a big end shot of Sentinel, the leader of the team, with his little beady eyes and dark shading and whatever these black marks above him are. Looks cool. And I like the color, the, the, the red, just the intense kind of color of it. They're done. You know, battle's over. And it's like a news report explaining what happened. And that's the end of... The B side to issue one. So, Young Blood number one. A lot of crazy stuff going on. Um, energetic and fun. Future me, current me, right now. I struggle with so many of the artistic things that, if like, I, if some people say it doesn't matter, but it, it totally does. It does to me. Again, I'm repeating myself as a guy who draws on an artist, looking at the stuff. Why are you doing these things? What what the hell are you thinking of? To me, it just screams of doesn't care. Or doesn't care about everything that he should. But it sold lots of copies. He made millions of dollars off this stuff. So, you know, good for him. But anyway, that's the last number one issue of the uh, Image Founding Fathers number ones. Now that I've done this, I've covered them all. I started with Spawn. We ended with Youngblood. Did all the others in between. We're going to keep looking at all the other issues. We're going to look at all of Youngblood, all of Wildcat, Cyberforce. Um, not all of Savage Dragon because he's still drawing it to this day, 300 issues in, but at least the first several issues of the miniseries and the regular series, especially issue seven. If you're a fan of Dragon, you know what issue seven has. Um, but yeah, Youngblood, um, equal parts, awesome and awful. Just kind of like I said about X-Force number one, there's some stuff that really, really works and we all responded to it. And there's some stuff that's just, I can't explain it. I don't get it. But that is, it was the first exciting issue. That is 100% fact right there. We were there, when we grabbed this off the shelf, we were so excited for it. And it was a flip book. Shit, yeah. And so that's it. So thank you for your time, for joining me. I appreciate it. And um, for listening to my kind of little opinions on what I think about um, this book specifically. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. And we will see you next time.